On occasion we can have a fika between the fika and the fika, so it's breakfast, fika, 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 lunch, fika, 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 dinner, but seldomly an evening fika. I will start with a very Swedish word that also kind of uh, works as a, a bad thing about us Swedish people and it's lagom and it's uh, the word for uh, when something is not super god, good or not super bad. No one is a fan but no one hates it. And this is an extremely difficult word to draw because it's rather abstract. And I think I will do this by drawing myself taking a, a summer swim. And the Swedish summer, the water is never lagom. How was the coffee? Was it hot enough? Yes, it was lagom. Have you enough food? Yeah, it's exactly lagom. And I'm going to uh, make myself the Swedish summer color. And this is the thing you say when you want your friends to have the nasty experience you just had in the water. How was the water? Lagom, come! Another word that we are very fond of is the word fika. And it's almost like a religion in Sweden. It is that little uh, cup of coffee and something sweet. If a Swedish person goes one day without his fika, it's not a real day. I think the cookies, the more boring they are, the better the fika. And uh, at workplaces they have really cheap cookies and really bad coffee. So it's, uh, it's still a fika, it's bad coffee, a bad cookie, but it's still a good fika. You don't have to make a big production. The next word I'm going to talk about is the word äppelskrutt. It is uh, what is left when you have eaten all of the eatable parts of an apple. So for apple scruts I would probably fill a complete page. The great thing with apple scrut is that you can just take an apple and create your own apple scrut. But I will go with my imagination in this case. Apple is probably seen as national fruit because it's so easy to have it in your garden. You don't have a plumon scrut or plum scrut. I eat a lagom amount of apples each week. An apple a day, keep the illustrator away. The next word I'm going to choose in Swedish, it's really a marker of your age and it's uh, abrovink. An abrovink is uh, a very, very practical thing that someone has thought of that is not really an expert at anything, but they are kind of solved a problem practically, but also very strangely. So it's a, a small device of some sort. My father was a real kind of Abrovink guy, so he always had some kind of strange solution. He was very practical, very good uh, carpeting and stuff like that. So this is a great word if you want to make some tools that really you don't know what they will do, but anything goes. So this, for example, might be something you could use uh, while plumbing. And it's also a great uh, thing you could start with one little lab of ink and then kind of fill out the whole page, uh, just go wild and uh, as relaxation. The best abrovinks are the ones that are so complicated no one understands that it even can work. I hope you have learned some Swedish and if you want to uh, take your creativity or your fika abilities to the next level, follow Domestica for more information about my online course. Hej då! It's goodbye in Swedish.